All right. All right. Good afternoon, America. Uh, good evening, the UK and Europe, and good morning, Australia and Southeast Asia. Welcome back to the Modcast! It's been over a year since we've done our last one, which was actually like the 2016 Christmas special with uh, Bobo and Jaina. But today, we're back, and today we have two guests with us. Our first guest is Aldos, we'll just do a sound off. So everyone say hi. Uh, hey all. Uh, second, we have we have Jangula. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. And we have Make Test Battles' very own Ryan. Hey all. Yay! All right. Um, just a brief uh int introduction for everyone, uh, for the uninitiated about. Uh, Aldos and Jangula, just in case. Um, so, Aldos uh, ha has a YouTube channel called Aldos, um, and he posts primarily gameplay, uh, that kind of stuff. I think he's done a little bit of modding, and yeah. Um, and you... Uh, uh, did you want to tell us anything else about yourself? No, I, I mean, I, I don't, I think my, my channel is mostly just gameplay. I, I don't, I, I mod a lot, but I don't really ever post it. Um, or at least I never really, I've never figured out how to make videos for it, I guess, and make them interesting. I'm just, I like the gameplay. I like playing with them and not making them pretty or what, so. Cool. Um, also, I just noticed something about your channel last night, and I took a screen cap. Um, you have 975, um, subscribers. And beautiful, many... beautiful subscribers. Pardon? And they're all beautiful. Yes. But I think when I last just looked, we have currently, like, 45 viewers. So, any of our viewers who aren't currently subscribed to Aldos, let's see if before the end of the stream we can, uh, get him over the... Uh, 1,000 limit because tomorrow is the 20th, which was that cut-off date for the YouTube partnership program thing. I don't know if you've got 4,000 hours of watch time, but we can get you past 1,000 subscribers. Hopefully, I I have the watch time. I don't have the subscribers yet, so that would be <gasps> wonderful. Yes. Okay. Quick, quick, quick. There's like four, 50 of us. Quick. Um. So um, 25 of you subscribe to his channel before tomorrow. Do it now. Um, alt tab. Uh, second, our second guest is Jangular. Um, you may know him. He's quite prolific with his Nerf news, weekly Nerf news. Uh, did you want to tell us um, uh, a brief summary of what you do, Jangular, for the uninitiated? Sure. Yeah, definitely over the last year, uh, my channel has shifted to doing the weekly nerf news and trying to stay you know relatively on top of that I, I am human do make my mistakes but i like being able to share the information of the week with people that may not be able to spend all their time on reddit or facebook or instagram and see things and may miss a thing here or there so i like being able to provide that and as same with as with aldos i love gameplay i love playing with the nerf blasters and getting out there and, and enjoying it so i love sharing that through videos as well and you've also started dabbling a little bit with nerf modding. I'm I'm dipping my feet into it with uh, kind of a little bit inspired by Mr. Nathan with his mod along series that I love watching. Kind of a beginner's fumbling take at uh, getting into the the insides of blasters. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and oh yeah, like um, just looking at your back catalogue now, you've like, I think from memory you've only maybe missed one or two uh, weeks over the past like six months or a year, so pretty decent effort, uh, good work man. So yes, uh, and also we have Brian, um, you may, ne may have never heard of him, he once dabbled in a nerf modding about 13 years ago. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I uh, post a thing or two to Reddit sometimes, not not often. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> so um, for the uninitiated who may be just uh, discovering our channel through this, uh, Ryan has been with Make Test Battle for um, since our inception, and he's also the um, pr producer of the original uh, first set of um, of third party Nerf flywheel motors, intentionally <clears throat> intentionally manufactured for uh, Nerf blasters. As well as, um, he's in the unique position where he has played Nerf in both America and Australia, in both Melbourne and in Sydney, in HVZ, uh, PvP, and even a bit of Bush Nerf. I think I think there's few types of events that I haven't done, which is great. I've played at Jangular's events, I've played at Andwar, I've played at Zed Town, I've played at Melbourne. So, yeah. in terms of things that I've attended, there's definitely a pretty vast range yeah which is awesome um so excellent so let's as jangula would put it let's jump right into the news oh, so um our first topic um for uh for hang on let me switch topics okay people are suggesting you are kind of quiet justin i'm um, quiet and that jangular is a little loud so yeah. all right hang on I positioned my mic further away, so hopefully that will accommodate that issue. Sweet. But yeah, uh, Justin, you're a bit quiet. I'm quiet. Okay. Turn up my mic. Just gotta have a bold voice. I'm trying. Uh, how do I do that again? Discord. Well, while Justin's figuring that out, I just want to say chat's already uh, taking it upon themselves to bump Aldos's channel and they're counting yeah. up the subscribers. I, I'm constantly refreshing the page. I was waiting to... <laughs> You've got you guys, five you... more to a thousand. Well, this is like, this is so surreal. This is so crazy. <laughs> yes! See, we're making a difference. Um, I'm an idiot. Where, where do yeah. I find... Yeah, I know. Um... <laughs> Voice. Okay, there it is. Uh, um, how do I just boost? No idea. That should be your output output level. Is it the input or output? Output volume. Output volume. Super professional here, guys, on the modcast. Um, well, you know, hey, as we you started tell. right on time this time, and the audio was okay when we did the preliminary test. So I think this is like the smoothest start to a modcast. And we've got the intros out of the way already. All right, that's I've boosted that my my output device to 170. Hopefully that's not too loud. Am I loud enough? Chat, let me know. Is it? I, I don't know. We'll, it'll it'll take a now. it'll take a few seconds. Did, but, uh, uh, I'd like to say uh, congratulations to Aldos for hitting a thousand subs. Yay! Boom! <laughs> oh shucks! Oh my God, awesome. that's so cool. yeah. All right, so now we, now we've got uh, you know boosting someone who deserves it to um, YouTube status. Let's actually get this show on the road. Mm -hmm. What have we got for us, Justin? Okay, so the first topic uh, of today is the 2018 Nerf Blasters, and let me transition. So just last month, uh, popular mechanic. Uh, break the news for the new rival li uh, line blasters, uh, and also just yesterday or the day before, um, the YouTube channel um, Family Gamer TV um, also posted the first video um, of uh, actual coverage of the 2018 New York Toy Fair um, bat. Um, and he actually did some coverage of the Nerf Hasbro booth. It's pretty exclusive. Pretty much only sellers are allowed in there, or people with special exceptions specifically from Hasbro. Um, so, the first blasters that um, we'll look at. Um, so, the first one, uh, I just want to get your thoughts on, and then I'll, I'll give you mine, um, is the uh, Nerf rival Hades. You mean this the is... Artemax? Yes. <laughs> the Artemax 2.0 official. Um, personally, um, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> it's 
It's the Art the Artemis but better and long, sleek, and just the look and the profile. Um, I've got an angle picture here. It just looks space gun. I love it. So uh, it, it is a pretty sexy blaster. Not one that we'll uh, be seeing in Australia, but I think it's pretty cool. I, I think it's funny that they basically, for these two, just took what they've already done right and just made them better and bigger. I think it's it's awesome for the people that loved the Artemis. Uh, it's not my personal flavor. It does look nice, um, but for the price tag, I'm not personally sold on it but for those that like that platform i think they'll probably just love this just as much if not more i mean just even more capacity with not that much bigger of a footprint yeah, seems good for the people that want it it's still pretty streamlined and but know. it doesn't take max yeah <laughs> I, I just hope they fix the the hop up on it because the the one that's on the artemis currently just kind of it boggles my mind sometimes how erratic it makes the the rival rounds yeah. I've actually, I should probably use our one properly at a war, our Artemis. I could probably give more opinion on that. But yes, moving on. So the next thing that was also announced by Public Mechanic was the behemoth, the Prometheus. You mean the Nemaxis. <laughs> and uh, so basically they've turned the uh, Nemesis into a overcarry is that the way you would describe it um doubled the capacity <laughs> once again of the nemesis with the similar um agitator feeding mechanism with a conveyor belt underneath and um there's been a video online i'll link down in the description after the stream um the uh family uh family gamer tv video um this thing just stock is spewing eight balls a second and it's just damn so nice um it's gonna be impressive what people do to it um like just even putting it on 3s i guess is gonna be nuts. so long as you don't get tagged in the first 10 minutes <laughs> but uh no i remember seeing people with nemesis at um uh end war and they were like alex in particular had a modified nemesis and seeing people using them just open up onto a, a spawner of zombies was just it was pretty fantastic this is this is my favorite blaster that's been spoiled so far i just it's so ridiculous and absurd i love this blaster it's it's big it's bulky it's not necessarily the most uh economical in terms of price but I want to turn it into a, a Space Marine heavy bolter from Warhammer 40,000 and just like run around and just feel like a total idiot just spraying balls at people. Absolutely. I, that'd be pretty sick. As far as modding go, the, this is actually going to have a different battery uh, in terms of like it's not going to be D's or C's or anything like that. It's it's actually a built-in pack, if I recall correctly, that will use a wall charger. So it's possible it's already getting a higher voltage um, or discharger or whatever than anything we see currently, even the, the rechargeable pack for like the Chaos. Um, so I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what the specs on it actually are once we get it in hand. Indeed. I mean, I I expect it's going to be a 7.4 volt uh, NIMH battery, just like the um, other pack. So, we'll see. That's, that was my thought as well. I'm just wondering why they decided to do it built-in instead of a drop-in pack that they already have. Um, how do you charge the drop-in pack that you get given? I've never actually seen or looked into it very much. Does it come it with a charger? Be, should should come with a charger. It's actually a really good question. Like, a couple of people at our with them, and I, I, all all you do is remove it. Like you have to remove it from the blaster, and then it gets, yeah, you you plug in. Hmm? You cut out there at the end. We Sorry. It, yeah, it comes. It has a wall charger. You just plug it in. I don't know how long it takes to to charge it from. 
like empty to full, but uh, I, it's not insane power, uh, but it, it is like, it, it definitely does perform better than just the regular D batteries. Oh, indeed. I mean, more voltage, more spinniness. That's it's technical stuff. <laughs> I, I appreciate that they're they're stepping things up, though. I think it's really it's nice to see something that's going to perform better stock. It may not be like super stock level or something like that, but it's still something better. It's it's another another toe dipped into something a little bit higher power, which is great. I think from a gameplay perspective, I remember looking at when the Nemesis was first announced and just going, oh, geez, there goes the gameplay. It's going to break the game. And once people actually started bringing them in and using them in our Nerf Wars, I, it, it was kind of amazing to me how it really didn't change things that much. It, it actually really enhanced the game and made for a lot of different play styles. Um, and like, yes, you could just hold down the trigger and spray and pray and whatnot, but I mean, it, it has its own down downsides to it. Uh, it's not just, you know, your god mode or whatnot. Absolutely. We had um, someone bring a, a nemesis along to an event, and we play with shields, so each team usually gets a shield. And I remember just standing behind a shield as hundreds of balls just bounced off in front of me blink, in blink, you know, blink, every blink, which blink. direction. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm actually kind of... big. Go ahead, Aldous. I, I, I was going to say, I, I'm actually kind of intrigued that they, so they, they, they're doubling the capacity again, making it 200 rounds, but now in order to wield it, you have to basically fire from the hip. So it kind of, again, it changes the, the gameplay and how you use it a little bit. Mm. What you were saying before, too, worried about, like, oh, is this, does this break the game? Does everyone now have to use them? Uh, we worried the same thing about um, full auto rapid strikes versus strifes and like other kinds of things, but uh, what we found is that the sheer volume you have to carry if you've got a really high rate of fire, like, is the limiting factor because if you're gonna, you need to carry extra mags if you're gonna shoot a lot. Um, and also one of the other things I noticed with rival um, at our events too is that. Um, past a certain distance, because they are a lower weight to surface area, uh, they float, and so they slow down a lot more quickly than nerf darts, like with that have a heavier tip, and so you can actually dodge the balls. Yeah. <laughs> they um, definitely have a, a max range for effectiveness, and like, I've got a lot of opinions in terms of balance, and, and whenever someone says... I lost. I lost connection. What? I lost, Four to eighteen. Uh, router connection. That's that's just incredible. Oh my god. Oh, we, we we're back. back. All right, hey. we're back. Hello. Plugged in here. All right, we're back. Sorry, I lost connection. Uh, router connection. We did it, fam. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Are we there? Yes. Okay. Awesome. We'll wait a couple seconds until... Let everyone catch back up. It's back. It's back. Welcome back, peeps. Woo! Okay. Excellent. Where were we at? We were just talking about... Sorry, the my next router cluster. just dropped out. And now back. Um... Sorry, I was... We brought up... We were on the topic of overpowered blasters. Yeah. Uh, HPA. And Ryan, how people stop thought... stop running the game. People... Whoa. I don't even think... It, okay, the point I was making really quick before we cut out was um, I am of the mindset that blasters are not OP. Blasters are not overpowered. Blasters are not going to break games. In the Bay Area here, we had Auto Darts show up with this Hurricane, and that's a blaster that some people thought was going to be just so destructive, and it changes the way you think about the game, but it's not overpowered. You just have to react accordingly. We had... Eli show up with his Hex two plus years ago, which was shooting at 170 plus uh, full auto, and that didn't break the game. Blasters don't break the game. They just change the way you have to play. They make you think and react more, and that to me makes the games even more fun. I love seeing powerful blasters at games that change the way people think. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, somebody somebody brought a hurricane uh, the the last couple weeks to our wars, and it is it's honestly hilarious to watch just literally a wall of rival rounds just project themselves your way. But they're still like they're moving relatively slowly compared to darts. Um, it's just funny that you you can't dodge it. <laughs> but I mean, he has to spend so long afterwards loading it back up in order to do anything after. So. Yeah, it's just a playstyle, you, and you you match the playstyle. You know that it's coming, and you kind of react to it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I mean, that's what people said when um, you know I started doing high-powered HPA blasters and destinies and double rapid strikes, and it's like just you know whatever. You get you adapt to it. It's the player that makes a blaster strong, not necessarily the blaster itself. You know, when when you play HVZ, for example, we have people who win every time because they literally run marathons and carry a maverick you know so I can totally see that mm-hmm. so what's next what's the so next blaster that we have so uh, so now uh, we're moving on to the next bit of nerf news that popped up around the same time Gizmodo um, broke the news on the nerf uh, infinus which is the new uh, full dart full auto flagship uh, blaster, and this one has some inter- interesting features of being uh, auto loading, where you actually feed darts into it, um, and also coming with a 30 drum mag, uh, which we haven't seen for quite some time since the like 35 drum. I don't know if five more darts than a 25 drum is that a big deal but it is kind of cool but also um some other things it does have select fire and it does tell you when it's ready to if wait, it's wait, still wait, got wait, darts wait. in it sorry do you mean select fire as in it's full auto or it can switch between semi and full uh between semi and full oh really yeah so it means it shouldn't be a, a belt blaster it should be a pusher mechanism Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, you can see here, um, this um, current image I've put up, um, basically there's like a feeding hole on the top of the blaster where you can stuff darts into, and then it loads the darts into the magazine. Uh, very funky. Um, I guess, uh, what are your thoughts on this, Aldos? I wonder how long that takes, and like, to load the full 30 darts like if you have to wait until it goes all the way through the mechanism before you can load it again each time um, aside from that I'm actually I really am pleased that Nerf is trying to add in actual new features and not just reshell stuff I feel like that's been Busby's job for the last couple of years of actually playing around with functionality in how a blaster actually is used versus nerf just kind of making really odd shells for blasters and whatnot or just reshelling what they've already designed in the past and that kind of thing um this is really a, a nice kind of breath of fresh air and i'm excited to use it and kind of play around with it and see what what comes of it so yeah mm. Um, if you look at the kind of side-on profile, I'll go back, um, uh, and also this angled picture, you can see just how high up from like where you would imagine the actual mag mag starting, the actual feeding port is, and also how far back it is. So I'm I'm actually really interested to see how that mechanism works. Like, are there like it, does it push it? down, across, how does it actually feed it in, and then uh, what kind of feeding mechanism then um, pushes the dart uh, then off into... uh, Well, I I have a devil's advocate concern. Um, We have not seen that magazine removed from the blaster, and uh, given that the shape seems Mm -hmm. to indicate the dart goes in and then downwards... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that mag is slightly different to a normal nerf mag to allow it to easily push darts in through the top. We'll see, but it'll be interesting. I wouldn't put it past nerf to do something like that, put it that way. Mm. I, I, I get that concern. I'd be surprised if they made it uh, a mag that couldn't be removed. 
Oh, not necessarily not removed. Um, oh, got it. Proprietary. Just, yeah, yeah, proprietary. Nerf specific that, yeah. magazine, specific drum mag right. that works with that system. So you can't just drop an 18 stick in there. Yeah, I give I give that about a 10% likelihood. But, yeah. um, I mean, there's clearly a mag release, so I'm going to assume that you can take it out. But to me, the idea of just pushing darts straight down through the top of a magazine, hmm. Maybe. So so do you mean to say that if if you were not to use that drum magazine and instead load an eighteen straight mag that it, it the possibility that it wouldn't feed and it wouldn't work? Potentially. That's that's my concern. Um, so I just, I just brought up... someone from chat in chat just brought up that uh Drac actually has handled it at um at the Toy Fair and has removed the mag. Oh, cool. I literally, yeah, I pimped, just pimped I house. just pulled up the video, and I'm looking at the mag, and it does not appear to be any different uh, in terms of the, the top feed. Well, that makes me slightly happy and have slightly more faith in Hasbro. <laughs> um, now, now I want to know more, like what, how, how that thing functions. My my guess then is it just forces the dart through the the feed lips. Something that would be cool is um if. This being turned into like a an uh, just people a using these tool. As, as a loader, yeah, as a mag it, loader. If I if I could make it so that it reloaded them quickly, so I could just fop 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 darts in from the back, I just use it as a uh, a reloading device. That's not a bad idea. I like that. We toyed around with that idea for our Nerf group because like everyone was carrying ten. Uh, well, eight to ten mags, and it was like, damn. And I think at it, at his peak, Ryan was carrying fourteen eighteens, weren't you? Sixteen. Sixteen eight. Well, oh, dang. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, also announced by Popular Mechanic <laughs> is um, the giant red <laughs> new Mega Blaster. So this is the Thunderhawk. Um, which co uh, comes with the brand new Mega AccuStrike darts. And I actually got a picture here of, w of one of the dart heads. And essentially, instead of like the AccuStrike, which have like triangular cutouts, um, this one is a flat cylindrical face. It's a, and it's um, cylindrical sides, but it has textures. Um, and smooth um, on the sides of the dart and sections of smooth triangles. Um, that looks prototype as fuck. Yeah. Um, maybe. Yeah. Probably. Maybe. We'll, we will find out. But it does have like the Nerf logo uh, embossed on the end of the tip. Um, which is interesting. And also, you can see from this picture, it does have a harmonica bar. Magazine, as they are referred, they it is not a clip. Um, <laughs> at, <That's> ridiculous. <laughs> um, uh, as Why? as said by Gun Jesus himself. Why? Why did they go with that? I mean, the blaster itself is a bit of a gimmick. It's entirely a gimmick, and whatever. But come on, just use a mag. Yeah. I just think the the, the mega darts couldn't handle being squished in a mag. The foam is just so soft and not, you know, just not thick enough that they just squish and they don't feed properly. I think, I think this is sadly the best way they'll have to do multiple shots in a blaster. Mm. You, you all know that when he gets one, Coop is going to make every single fucking erection joke about this blaster that he can or die trying. I don't think he makes any other jokes. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I don't think we need to say much about this thing. <laughs> I'm so uninspired by the the Mega series. I I don't know. I really have not messed around with it at all. I mean, we we have a guy down here um, who we have not featured yet, but he has a air blaster that is kind of HPA powered. It's soon to be HPA powered. That is a Centurion. That is a basically mega air blaster and seeing a 250 fps you know scar barrel accuracy mega coming at you is it's a sight to behold i definitely fun. want to see that but uh that's not what this blaster is so 
actually very quick. Mm. Hang on, I might be able to bring out the picture of it. There it is. There it is. Yeah, that's Ronnie's. Um, he's got a compressor line coming out of a like um, carry bag and with the pipe going into the back of um, a Centurion. It's amazing. Just yep. plunk. That'd be so cool to see. Yeah, so hopefully uh, the cool thing that could come out of this for him and I guess maybe for us is if um, widespread um, AccuFake Megas... <laughs> We'll but see. Maybe. All right. Moving on to um, <laughs> Ryan's favorites. So oh announced God. by Geek. dot com uh, was the uh, the Doomlands. Is it Doomlands or is it Zombie uh, Zombie Strike? Um, the Scavenger, which is essentially kind of a reshell of the Slingfire, now with um, a stock mount. Uh, and coming with a whole bunch of accessories which look like they're just copying laser gnomes um, taking a note out of his book with like the uh, rail attached uh, magazine holder uh, that slips under the side and also the announcement of the prestigious modulus ghost ops line which is essentially clear shell um, modulus blasters and uh, let's so here's well, I I don't think we have really much to say on a reshell of a sling fire, but here is I mean, the... except for the fact that they somehow managed to make it look worse. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Um. Uh. But we'll start on the evader first. Um. And here it is in all of its clear glory. Now I did get a um a screenshot from the Geek dot com's video. Uh, looking in at the flywheel cage, the flywheel cage itself is clear, and I, I can't really tell because of the angle of the light, but I think the flywheels themselves might also be clear, which is... It does almost look like it, or at least semi-transparent, possibly. Yeah, here's another photo in front of a window with just all the sunlight coming through. Um, the the problem is is that the motor, the anodized sides of the motors are grey and and they're also reflecting light so it's a little hard to tell but that's kind of cool because uh, even if they're not clear um, I think everyone's just going to replace them so now you know um, instead of window cages or whatnot, um, uh, sorry uh, window, um, what do you call it? Where's my motor covers. One, 180 one motor covers that require windows, now you can have windows for your 130 motors and you can show off what kind of cage you're running inside your blaster though, um, I, yeah personally, I, totally I am not a fan of clear um, the only clear blasters that I've liked are some of the ones that have been done by, I believe uh, I think it's Foam Freaks, i have not or was it Liberty Foam? I don't know, anyway uh, basically just dying uh, clear blasters to a almost, you know, not transparent anymore shade. I, I do not like the look of clear. Hmm. Personally, I, I totally think. dig them. I get not liking them. Uh, I think it's just, it just comes down to taste, which is pretty much sadly what you said, but I love the idea of people being able to have their internals uh, on display essentially and be able to like, you know, you want a nice display piece or something that looks kind of cool. I've always dug the clear stuff. Um, and if we can say one thing about the Ghost Ops line being a modulus subline, is that at least all of the accessories for future Ghost Op blasters should actually match the rest of the Ghost Op blasters, unlike the regular modulus line where they cannot stick with yeah, a supplemental three color. Shades of white and also different colored accents because you've got the lime green. I think one's yeah. yellow and that orangey yellow, and then you've got. Um... There's blue. another color. But uh, yeah. Yeah, totally get that. <laughs> Everyone in the chat too, is, yeah? is begging us to talk about the actual big deal about this blaster, which. Alright. Yes, totally okay. <laughs> I, I know what everyone wants. Yes, it lights up. It's got a glowy button, so the whole thing lights up. It's green LEDs inside. Look at that. It's, every, it's all cool. The, the You're silent. such a troll. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here it is. There is now an ammo counter. Um, 
I think uh, is his name Nathaniel. No. Uh, there we go. Emma Counter, yeah, Emma Nathaniel. Counter. Do. Yeah, Emma Counter is probably. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so this is the Chrono Barrel, uh, which is both um, a dark counter, which can be set to count down and count up, uh, and is also a chronograph. Um, and we now know that this blaster stock suit shoots 65 FPS. <laughs> That um this this really caught me from left field. I was absolutely not expecting this and it makes almost no sense for Hasbro to do this. Um when I, I feel like this is kind of a piece that will make them, you know, have to admit that all of their blasters shoot exactly the same and that, you know, saying one thing is more powerful than another is just a little untrue. So I don't know. I, I think it's very surprising. I was not expecting this at all. Uh, thoughts, yeah. Aldos? I don't know. Maybe maybe they just did it for us. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> like, just e have an easier time chronoing our, our mods or something. I don't know. It is a little weird that they would, like, it shoots 60 FPS. Like, uh, Wait, okay. did they say FPS? I thought they only yeah, said yeah. FPS. No, it says FPS. No, Bottom I, right, it says FPS. No, I mean, I thought they only said FPS on, like, the rival line, um, and they the said a barrel. distance. It has FPS written on it. Okay. Yeah. Dang. In before, there's a tiny little flap that if you shoot over 70 FPS, it drops, and then the barrel doesn't shoot anymore. <laughs> that's, that's me. <laughs> He's so messed up. I saw people joking comments about like, oh, watch if it shoots over seventy, it automatically sends a report to Hasbro that you're modifying their <laughs> blasters. Yeah, call the police. Yeah, the, the curious thing will be whether that third digit we see on the screen will bump to over a hundred FPS or not. Oh, if they will just cap it at ninety nine point nine, it is three digits, and it also supposedly. Uh, will read in meters per second too, so I guess we can technically get higher readings through meters per second, but you know, uh, we're kind of standardized on feet per second which is strange. I wonder if it'll be the one unit or there will be an American version and then there'll be an everyone else version. <laughs> oh no. There's probably a little switch somewhere. That'd I'll... be my guess. I was kind of hoping that uh, the front would have the nerf, uh, like the gun front gun attachment, then you could stack these <laughs> so you could progressively see your FPS drop as they go through each one. Well actually that would be a fun experiment because you could get yeah. that uh, modulus barrel that is the short little, you know, barrel extension to barrel extension oh. and just keep stacking those with a crony on the end to compare the FPS and Stop, see how much it drops. you're giving Coop ideas. <laughs> video ideas. What, what do you think this is going to cost? Oh, no idea. Is it being sold I'm separately? Afraid. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. No idea. I if, think... if I'm hazarding a random guess uneducated, I just feel like $60. Is 60 I was going to say 40 I don't think you could sell sell just an except. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how much they tried selling the camera separately for. But is there any was the camera that... more than that? Pardon? I think the camera was more than that. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that that'll be interesting. Um. Yeah. Um. Here is one last picture of the uh, scavenger before we move on. Um, the stock has a mount point for a a basically two shot triad. Um, I wonder if that like comes as I think all these accessories. I'm now curious. Can you buy them separately? But also behind it, there is an axe stock where there is like a a melee axe. I don't know if it's soft foam, but on the base of it, it actually has a stock click on stock attachment point. So you could stick an axe on the bottom of the uh, scavenger. Um, Kids are gonna get hurt. Yeah. What a time to be alive. <laughs> no, I. If you look at the the way the reflection of the light is in the top right hand corner, it's not like sharp. So I suspect that it's foam. Hmm. Uh, I would and, think so as well. And also, um, I can't remember what this is called, but um, the rip attachment base. It looks like the eviscerator from Dead Space. 
Um, oh yeah, chainsaw blades on everything. Yeah, that'll circular saw totally blades. Yeah, reinnovate enough. Kids are definitely gonna put that that axe stock on and then just baseball bat their blasters into other kids, and it's going to be terrible. <laughs> amazing! I th it'll make it for amazing YouTube videos. All right, uh, so we're now on to the next bit of news. So, um, this kind of these leaks broke on Baidu, the uh, basically Chinese Facebook, and were initially shared by the Japanese uh, Nerf blog, Nerf Market, or Nufu, whatever it is. Um, actually, googled um, what is the Japanese word for Nerf. It's interesting. Uh, so anyway, um, so what appears we may be receiving, uh, this is still in speculation territory because these could be fakes or maybe, um, uh, or the, as Jangular put it in his Nerf news yesterday, these could be maybe production tests or like, uh, art design tests that were never released. But we seem to be getting a repaint of, um... The sure strike, um, sure strike uh, in a elite blue, um, and a, another elite blue strife, uh, the strife CQ10, which comes with the ten dart magazine and different other attachments, basically. Um, well, I can never comment on a blast being photoshopped again, so I'm just not going to. <laughs> <They're deep fakes. laughs> The deep fakes have all uh... been passed through Instagram, Facebook's generator. <laughs> um, uh, dear. And, uh, well, see, I, I can't remember, was the original Strife, was there a blue one, right? Yeah, there is. Oh, I'm an idiot. Of there's course there's right a here. blue Strife. I'm an idiot, don't worry. I just looked up and I'm like, oh yeah, there's Ryan's um, MP5. Can we just get onto the fact that they're going to be reselling the Rapid Strike and yes. that makes me okay, very happy? Yes, okay, sorry. <laughs> That's the main news. Gear up, but rebranded as um, Accu Strike Rapid Strike. That looks cool. They're gonna call it the Strato Hawk. I need that stock I in mean, my that's, life. That, that is the dumbest name of all time. But um, <laughs> we can move past that. It's so accurate, though. I just, I just, I just want the stock. I just want to buy the Gear Up Rapid Strike, and uh, oh, and it's white. Yeah, yeah, put that stock on the Fabu Strike and just be happy. Oh, but yeah, that the thing, looks sick. I know, right? The thing that concerns me, the, the, the one thing that jumps out to me that these could be fake is I would be very surprised if you look at the Rapid Strike. It has Accu Strike on the back, like the, the cheek rest. Um, I'd be very surprised if they actually changed the molds uh, for that. Although... If they're changing the name, actually, I'm thinking th about it, I'm, they would I'm have to change that panel as well. Yeah, my my, I would suggest that that's just printing. That would make that yeah. makes sense. Also, to but, point uh, out, there's like a couple different molds of the strife because we've when we've opened them, we've noticed little changes, and there are changes over time, even between just color reshells of say the uh, the recons. There are little differences there too. Yeah, they have to repair them and, and then eventually remake them. So if they if the Rapid Strike molds needed to be replaced anyways, they could have figured, well, let's let's rebrand it, rechange the name, and so we'll have the Stratohawk on the side instead of the Rapid Strike on that rectangle. And then, you know, if they wanted to add that AccuStrike logo or print it on either way, so that that makes makes it certainly possible. I I will, however, get it out of the way and say that if you do run these pitches through error level analysis, that they are Photoshop as fuck. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Defense, I mean, I, I, they're, they're, they're definitely no. They're, they're definitely pitches that have been prepared. Like they're not. Right. That is not a photo of a box. Well, if oh, you no, look at the uh, promo pitches for the Thunderhawk and uh, the Infinite, you know they've got that drawn out of polygons look to them uh, bringing them back up now but uh, the, these also have that same kind of um, box art look oh for sure but I mean like all of those text panels and stuff have been added in to those images you, d you don't get a proper 
like edge on anything. It like those have definitely been edited together. This from is very much it. international release box art. I don't think I've seen seen this with the warning written on it in so many languages before. Even when I when I visited China in two thousand fifteen. That um that strife <coughs> barrel attachment does make me pretty happy though. The which one? The blue modulus barrel. Oh, right, yes. Mo most people have probably figured out by now I'm not huge on painting and stuff like that, so when you get accessories and parts that can make a look in the right colour, it just makes me very happy. So I hope you know that blue a, isn't stupid blue. It's going to be a different shade from I, elite blues. Don't, don't, don't pop I'm my sorry, blue. I'm sorry. I just, looking at it, you just know. Just no. Oh yeah, he's right. It's Stop gonna it. be like that off-color mm -hmm. filament blue, that nope. denim blue that we got. Nope. I'm so That's sorry. Just enough Ryan. to piss you off. Um, ah, and the last thing from this uh, was the battle camo version of the. You mean the battle cut. cum? Yeah, battle cum. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's I, I was tempted to screen cap that with the auto translate and put this in, but I don't know. Demonetized. Um, I, I'm just surprised that they changed like all the other names except Rough Cut. Wait, did they? No, it's still uh, it's still s s strife. Well, fine. Most of the other names, like Close why rename the Rapid 10. Strike? Why rename the um, the other one? Does it make sense? Hmm. I guess since they wanted to go with the. Wait, what uh, Accu Strike they... theme, they wanted to give it that bird name. Oh, yeah, that. the Side Strike's renamed to the Talon. I didn't see that. Um, cool. Oh, they've also changed the Strife. Uh, well, kind of. It's now the CQ10. Yeah, as I was saying. Which is like, what? All right. Gotta move those old Modulus 10 Dart banana mags. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, moving on to the last bit of news, uh, this is probably the single most anticipated blaster um, of the entire eight, uh, 2018 announcement lineup. <laughs> the Nerf Doomlands hold up. Like, you uh. thought <laughs> you thought they were done with Night Finders and Fire Strikes, but no, <laughs> or the Glow Shot. But no, they've now made another single loading, rear priming <laughs> a pistol. Let's and I think go. The only thing oh, right. To point out for this thing is um, you can see the O ring and the spring. So some people have suggested that the plunger tube is actually part of the shell or it's a clear plunger tube. Yeah, clear I think plunger that's kind of neat. I like the clear plunger tube. That's cool. Uh, that's something that I've always appreciated about the Doomlands. They've got the chunks of clear, and that's just cool. I loved how they did it on the Lawbringer, um, and yeah, it, I think that's cool. And they should do that more often. With um, spring the and stuff. Glow Strike did have a clear plunger tube, so and it looks like a similar kind of shape of like actual pull rod. Uh, your thoughts, Aldos um, and Jane? Eh. I'm just glad they put the scope on. <laughs> so, I mean, I, mean I, I guess the 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 clear plunger tube is fun, but pass. <laughs> <laughs> the most I was just like, why does this exist? Type tone of your voice. Oh. I yeah, I just I don't know. They it's like oh yeah, well we haven't made a Doomlands blaster in a while. Let's just put this out there. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's disappointing that they don't have a barrel attachment, so I couldn't put my chrono barrel on it, though. I mean, that's just oh. poor form. They're missing out on the tactics, bro. <laughs> um, you got a scope, though. It's okay. It balances out. Yeah, yeah. And oh, that I mean, scope the scope may actually be a bit overpowered and game-breaking. Oh, shit. Um, it probably should be bad. Also it note, it also has a two-dart holder on top of that scope. <sighs> that's a bit far. That actually makes it functionally somewhat useful. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> All right, finally, um, this just dropped the other day as well. Um, the rip chain, the no, the don't zombie say these the words. zombie strike rip chain, a pump action chain fed um, blaster, uh, basically. This is like uh, what was it? The rip. Was it rip? Uh, no, what, rip strike. I thought, no, I thought they run. Strike. I 
thought they won the race to the bottom with the Rev Reaper. I thought they won the race to the bottom, and they proved me wrong, and they made something worse. <laughs> Why? Never, never tell an American they've reached the bottom. <laughs> They'll just make you hold your beer. <laughs> They're gonna keep digging. Yeah. Um, that is just... Uh, sure, why not? But no, not near me. I mean, I, I look at these lines as... These are the lines that are geared towards their main target demographic of kids. And I think kids love like these kinds of like goofy, uh, maybe not the most functionally sound blasters. So like, yeah, they're not going to work for us. We don't want them, but we're not who these are meant for. So I try and take these in that, you know. Yeah, of course. Of, of course. Replace it, the it, yeah, bar internally with uh, a HPA piston, Ryan. How about no? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> uh, what were you going to uh, say, I'll... Aldos? I, I, I think, like, so at our family nerf battles, when there are six year olds running around and whatnot, a, you can definitely tell that it's not at all about how their blaster is really performing. They just are in their own head. They've got this daydream as to what they look like and how cool they are. And, you know, firing this thing for literally two seconds, then it takes them ten minutes to load it. <laughs> you have to, they have the time of their lives. So good for them. I don't know. That, that's what a lot of the nerf blasters are, is um, they're selling an experience, not actual performance. Like, the Centurion, when you prime it, it's such a long draw, and you hear, like, the clunking of everything, and the bolt slides forward automatically for you. It feels like you're operating, you know, a giant Hev sniper rifle from uh, StarCraft. Um... It's just, um, you know, it sells that experience. And the same goes for the, uh, what was it called? The, um, the crossbow. Uh, no, not the wraith bow. The other bow. Um, uh, that, you know, um, actually selling the zombie survivor, um, walking dead experience with a, cro finally with a crossbow, um, and, you know, it does that. Like, it does feel cool. But, um, performance-wise, eh. <laughs> but, um... I mean, that's that's all well and good, but they stopped selling the Retaliator and Strife in stores here, and I will never forgive them for that. Oh. Oh, we still have them in stores up here. Uh, I hate you. <laughs> Eldas had to rub that one in. <laughs> I'll send you one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I guess, I guess it's 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 great that Hasbro comes out with these fun new things, but at least in Australia, it, for us, it's at the expense of the stuff that is actually, like, good, quote-unquote. And I guess that does also come down to your audience. Um, you know, in Melbourne, most of our events are a bit more seriously themed. Maybe HVZ isn't, but um, I know a lot of events in the US are less serious, I guess. But mm. I hate that word in that context, so I'm trying to think of a better one, but I can't. Um, I'm Actually, this will lead into a later topic. Um, so, uh, that's actually the end of uh, the Nerf Blaster announcements and news. Is it, though? Oh, There's a couple oh, others. We, we don't know if anything else has been announced yet, but... Um, no, we've seen, we've seen images of the Delta Trooper and the uh, series, we, I assume, two um, micro shot of the Rough Cut. Delta Trooper? Yeah. Whoa. They didn't go with a Beta Trooper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, they don't it want none of them cuck the... blasters. Hang on. Oh, God. Wait, Delta Trooper? You can Trooper? see the image, yeah. Uh, Delta Trooper was one of the names that was in the name leak that uh, Adrian Kelly found a few months ago. And you can see the box in the Family Gamers video. It's essentially looks like a um, Slamfire Retaliator is is with different colors is what it's looking like it's gonna be. Oh, oh cool! Oh, that makes me happy. Slam! Yeah. Ooh, I I totally missed that. Oh well. And then yeah, the uh, the thing I'm excited about is is the rough cut micro shot because. Oh, I love this rough cut. Just cute. I know, right? 
They have no reason to exist, but I love that they do. They're just cute. Exactly. I love that Hasbro just started. It's a chibi this blaster, line. and I want exactly. them. Exactly. They just sit on my shelf and just look adorable. Yeah. You carry one of each into battle. All of them on pull chains, so you you shoot one dart with each of them. I there needs to be like, like <laughs> someone needs to make like a little anime thing and have a little chibi with wings floating over everyone's shoulders. A little micro shot or something. I don't know. What is they're this? They're just it? they're they're cute, and I want the uh, hammer shot one. Just that's that's all I want. There needs to be a someone needs to make a plushy Ryan. Oh, that's the right size, scale size to the um, the micro shot hammer shot. Uh, we'll leave that to the community. All right. Oh no no no! We need a long shot micro shot. Oh. <laughs> there we go. That uh, that would how do you? It's it? a long micro shot. The world's tallest midget. <laughs> All right. Moving on, um, we're now, uh, so that's basically it for what I knew of. At the time of capture, getting all the images together, uh, what was announced as of last night before I went to bed. So, uh, moving on. So, uh, about a month ago, YouTube changed its um, uh, YouTube partnership program policy. Uh, essentially, um, as we mentioned at the start, um, uh, with Aldos's channel, now in order to qualify f for monetization through Google AdSense, uh, you need to have um, 4,000 hours watch time, uh, which is uh, uh, 240,000 uh, yeah 240,000 minutes, um, and a thousand subscribers within a 12-month period. Um, when this news broke, pretty much all of YouTube had another meltdown and everyone got to get some sweet views and ad revenue complaining about YouTube, <laughs> once again. Um, uh, and um, both Aldos here and Jangular did express their opinions and um, I wanted to express mine on the topic, so this is kind of me using my soapbox for <laughs> my opinion, And but I did want your your feedback from you two since you're kind of I guess closer to that other side of the fence I guess because um I think it really only affects one type of person and that's the person that uploads a single viral video um mm -hmm. I don't think that it actually affects a serious YouTube channel in the slightest 4,000 hours total watch time is about 6,000 views if you're doing you know 10 minute videos so, so. yeah so uh, yeah, that that was my kind of thought on it. Um, so I actually looked at our history, and it took us um, four months and a day to break two hundred uh, the two hundred uh, the the watch time, and also um, uh, and at that point we also had one point four uh, thousand subscribers. So what? Yeah, eleven hundred subscribers. So those numbers seem to maybe coincide, but then again, I only have a sample set of one. Um, but um, uh, what I'm getting at, I guess, is like if this was... Uh, I think when YouTube opened up the floodgates, because initially when it all started, um, it was done manually by people. It was It was... If you knew someone at YouTube, you could maybe get partnered that led to the rise of um, the YouTube networks where basically it was a gated community through those YouTube networks that's when they were actually relevant but that all changed in 2012 when they opened the floodgates and just about anyone could get monetization um, I think uh, I can't remember what the original baseline level was but um, I think they did set it maybe too low um, and I guess my second point is if going back to 2015 when we kind of started, um, or right now if I was to start again, um, would that hinder me or stop me or make me demotivated? And I gotta say no, um, because this is something that I've really wanted to do and 
uh, and also when we were starting up the channel, like, uh, the three of us were pretty realistic, um, or like, we were like, we, you know, we'll just keep doing it for a year and see if we could actually generate any substantial kind of revenue from that or actually get the views. Um, and just the whole goal of when we started was just to focus on improving the content, marketing, um, and improving the thumbnails and all that kind of jazz. Um, I don't know if... Um, Look, as, as I said, I, I think yeah. that whatever, it's going to seriously affect people who upload a single video that gets, you know, 10 million views because it goes viral. Um, it will hinder the startup of new channels for sure. Um, you know, yeah. and, and that's that sucks. But I think that, you know, 4,000 4, hours or whatever of watch time isn't really that much money of, you know, ad revenue. And if that's going to break a channel existing, then they're going to, you know, struggle anyway because you know it's you know a couple yeah. of bucks really um i think especially yeah. people in in our hobby like you're you're unless unless you're the the top five nerf channels you're, you're not really going to be making enough to call it your day job uh so i mean you're doing it because you love it and just because you're not making money from it Regularly, it's not going to stop you from doing it. Um, the the thing that I, like I agree with Ryan that it, the 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 trouble with changing it is like you know people like me I've I <laughs> I just hit one thousand I literally just just got it I've been doing this for fourteen months um, and there was a little lull last year where I, I wasn't uploading as much uh, because of my my wedding and whatnot um, but. It, it is kind of crazy to me that, that it took 14 months to hit a thousand subscribers and in that amount of time, like, it's not an insignificant amount of money um, in, in the sense of, okay, so in the sense of, is it a day job paycheck? It's an insignificant amount of money. It is like pennies, but yeah, you extrapolate like that and you say, hey... Right. And you say, you know, hey, you know, I, I, I wanted to do this. It's a fun hobby. And in the process of learning this hobby, I can apply whatever small amounts of revenue I make from it, it back into the channel to help myself grow and, and become better. So, for instance, this last month, I, I, I've never cashed out of YouTube. I never... A, like it's just been accruing, accruing, accruing. I've been doing this on my other channel for a couple years. I started Aldos 14 months ago, or maybe a little bit more than that, and I've just been letting it go up. And you know, it was one of those cool things of looking back and going, "Oh, that's like that's a couple hundred dollars." Um, and yeah, I've worked hard to get that couple hundred dollars, but it's nice to see it and then say, "You know what? I'm going to cash out and I'm going to do something crazy and, and reinvest back into the channel." And so I, I bought all of my streaming gear and and I want to start doing streaming and whatnot. And it's just kind of no, nice. I think it was worth it though. I just want to point out cool. your stream does look really clean. Um, putting it out there. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, so, but it's not it's not cheap like that. But it's nice to know that I was able to cash out and. Mm put that back into the, the channel. And I didn't have to spend any of my money in order to do that. Well, I guess it is my money, but like I, you know, I worked, I earned it, but you know, it's YouTube money. I, I did it, I built it up for the channel. Now I can reinvest it and, and hopefully grow for the, the next thousand subscribers with the, the new features and whatnot that, that my channel can get. And it just kind of sucks that people won't be able to do that anymore. Yeah. That is definitely true. That's oh, not something is. I considered. Hmm. Um, did you have any other anything else to add, um, Jane? I I think it's definitely it's it's rough either way for the people that are right on the the cusp of it because as you know Aldous just said there is a certain value and a feeling of accomplishment when you do cross a threshold finally it's like a stepping stone kind of achievement and you get you know that hundred bucks or whatever that you get to put back into your channel and that is really nice it feels like you're accomplishing something um, and for so so for those that have been chasing that and, and slowly building their audience or right on the cusp it's really frustrating and really a, a bummer 
this is happening. For those that are just getting into things now, I think it's not too bad. That's, it's not um, the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that, that was another thought I had, um, uh, is that um, at in 2000, the start of 2015, when we kind of started, um, Coop had only just started back, Drac had only just started back, so we were kind of in a different situation um, and uh, to try and grow our channels. Um, and there were, really weren't... Ooh, I don't think that... I think there was only you... I think there was Basic Nerf, Bobo, of course, um, Psych, I think, was still uploading. Yeah, yep. but, like, in that time frame, um, a whole bunch of other channels have actually popped up, you know, like Nerf, uh, Nerf 98, uh, 498, um, I think, I don't know if Mr. Nathan was posting, um, I know Alice Cooped up, popped up, um, also, um, Evan B. Nerf. So, like, you know, it's all changed um, that now there's a lot more people and a bit more competition, but I I think um, the thing that everyone forgets is that uh, audiences can subscribe to multiple channels and a single channel can't produce the entire watch time of a, of a single individual anyway. Um, so I think, uh, I think it just makes it maybe harder that the bar has already been set to a higher quality standard if that makes sense or just um or that kind of thing um so if you are jumping in uh, this is like not just in nerf but in any kind of genre you've got to be doing something different that other people aren't doing so that there's a reason for people to watch you because you know um say with airsoft uh novage and silo entertainment already exist if you're just going to copy them why should people watch you kind of thing yeah, definitely agree that you need to find what works for you. And yeah. when I first started, it was gameplay. There was not much gameplay being posted. And I really wanted to bring quality gameplay videos because to me, that's the most fun part of this hobby. Mm. Um, unfortunately, uh, I thought that gameplay videos may be as popular as um, gaming, airsoft gameplay videos or paintball videos. Because the concept is the same. It's similar, just a different platform. But uh, gameplay videos, no matter what channel you're on, for the most part, do not bring in a massive amount of views. Uh, you guys have one or two really popular gameplay videos, like your Nerf combat with the medics has yeah, like yeah. a ton of views. But for the most part, it's not the case. So you know, it, it's how you adapt and adjust. And I really hope that we get to a point where gameplay videos are popular and something that people look for and don't expect to see Also important to videos. note that even though those might have high uh, view numbers, the audience retention is also exceptionally low. Uh, it depends Fair. on which one, because um, like Medic Mash, because of like there's a total lack of intro, that one instantly dies. Um, I think it drops to like 10% or 20% audience retention within 30 seconds, whereas a good performer, it's usually by a minute, we still have 60% um, audience retention, and I think that's the case on Truck Attack, the one we're playing at the concrete. Um, anyway, um, yeah. what were we saying? Yeah, yeah we wanted to get into logistics I'm, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. uh, the yeah, streaming uh, thing, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see that as well. Yeah, um, it's it a, really cool this, this, this is actually naturally leading into what the next topic was. Um, so I think we've kind of covered uh, YouTube, uh, the YouTube change. Uh, so yes, how do you produce <laughs> your gameplay? So the gear, software, and your editing style. Um, and it, I guess you were already touching on that with um, gameplay. Um, I think it also totally depends on how you edit and how you present it because um for instance um uh what is it the nerf minigun mod um that uh I did a loadout video with Greg um um and he done his uh Punisher combined with Vulcan and most of that video is actually gameplay um, but I titled it as Loadout and Combat, and because I think of the way that I did structured, I combined the two, because usually the, um, um, 
what is it? The uh, uh, nerf loadouts usually have a high retention because not just because they're short, but also because it's like an individual engaging and talking to the camera there in the scene. It's not just like this disembodied voice giving a voiceover kind of thing. But uh, I think there's a certain way that you have to do that as well um, uh, t to make that work. Um, so with this, um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that was a cool experiment for me and it kind of worked out because I think that's got like 200,000 views or more at the, this point. Um, so yeah, I think it totally also depends on how you present it and that kind of thing. So, um, what, um, uh, how do you to edit, I guess? So yeah, yeah, go for it. We'll start with. All right. Uh, all right, I'll go. Um, oh. I oh, we lost Aldos. Yeah, it looks like his his mic uh, just uh -oh. popped off. So, are we trying to get him back? I guess I will. Uh... Oh. Oops, I'm here. Uh, yeah, but no, Je I think Jangular should go first. He actually got me oh, inspired yeah. to do gameplay footage. So, sick. Oh. Yeah, props to you, man. Go go for it. Oh, oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> so my yeah, my style I guess has evolved and changed. Um, to the point where it was just a blaster or a cam on the blaster to running a three cam setup where it was a face cam, a barrel cam, and a head cam to now being a gimbal uh, on the blaster for the best smooth footage I can get and then I just recently added a drone to my gear so I'm going to have drone footage to go with the supplemental slow motion footage I'm really trying to give a more all-around experience for my gameplay videos for the most part. I'm still going to do the old-school ones that I had that are like single rounds where I talk through my thought process and things, but I've really been enjoying doing the sort of um, stylized videos where it gives people first-person action and tags, but it also shows the environment and, and the fun that people are having, because I want people to feel like they are there and they're getting to experience part of what I'm getting to experience because that's the joy that I get to have when I'm out yeah, playing. Yeah, that's, that's the focus of all my edits is I'm trying to give the viewer the presence of being there. Yeah, so um, I, it's it's funny the some of the inspiration for changing styles and trying things out. I actually started doing montages videos before doing straight gameplay, but watching channels like Dude Perfect of all <laughs> channels. Their videos, whether you hate them or, or not, their videos are so cleanly put together and so well done. I can't not enjoy them for how they're put together and feel like they're done they're well. They're a well-oiled machine and well-practiced yeah. at this point. Yeah, so it's just like being able to watch it, it's like, that makes sense. So I is, see what they're doing and trying to... a inspiration for your last gameplay that you uploaded? Because I can see that. Yeah. Definitely that edit to uh, the beat and that kind of thing. I think, uh, honestly, yeah. I think that's one of your best edits so like so far, and it's cool to see you progressing and that kind of thing. Uh, my only criticism would be is um, during the gameplay, cut the music down and um, better audio during the gameplay, So because um, I've noticed just um, up upgrading our audio has been like one of the bigger changes to the quality of our gameplay I think so interestingly enough uh, I was running external audio for that game oh, yeah? uh, unfortunately the <gasps> mic popped out of the recorder mm -hmm. and so the recorder was just bouncing around in my dump pouch so I had to use the onboard audio from the GoPro which uh, was a bit of a bummer <laughs> Had that happened before? Yeah, I was just I was listening. I was like, "Why does audio sound so terrible? What's going on?" And I remember oh, recorded right. a lot that's never been released. Just either yep. little issues, or the game wasn't that interesting, or oh yeah, it's always the games you don't film that are like amazing. It's like, ah, oh, I wish yes. I had a camera. <laughs> yes. Um, Aldos, um, so, uh, let us, uh, tell us about your edits, and also, uh, lead on to, like, what your actual streaming, streaming stuff is. Tell us is. the secrets. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna pick your brains, <laughs> since you're the most experienced on this now. Yeah, so, 
Um, I, I, I think one of the, the things that I kind of set up for my channel as I was, I was growing in the, the last couple of months, especially in, in the last half year or so, was uh, being able to do multiple perspectives for battles just because I have a confined arena that I always play in. And uh, like, in order to host our wars, or like, in order to be a, an actual business, we need our security cameras set up and and watching stuff and whatnot. I was like, oh, I could pull footage from that and and use it in order to like show every perspective in a round of a in like what 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 game mode we're playing in a nerf war. And it just kind of like it it gives you that really true third person perspective that. I think a lot of people miss out on because, just because you, you can't do that really in an outdoor game because there's too much field to play um, and there's too many people and whatnot. So uh, as far as my actual gear and setup and whatnot, I use a side-mounted um, Sony action cam. The, the, the actual model is an FDR X3000. I recommend this thing out the wazoo to people that want to be able to do gameplay footage and actually have it look high quality and whatnot, um, especially if you're going to be moving around quickly. I played around, I think when I first started filming, I was using a GoPro Hero 4 Black, and it was a nice camera when I when I bought it. And then just because of how how it writes footage, was not working for me because I, I'm, I'm moving around so much in gameplay that everything just becomes blurry and mm. watchable. So then I got a gimbal, and then I had to deal with all the wires and the, the gimbal and like the gimbal not tracking quickly enough or whatnot. Um, so I, I when I saw the Sony cam, just like, oh, geez, this is everything I've ever wanted. Uh, somebody asked for the camera again. It's a Sony FDR X3000. It's Boba cheaper. Boba has one of those as well. Yeah, um, it's it's cheaper than a GoPro, the and Hero 6, it, you mean? yes. Oh, okay, well, yeah, it's cheaper than, than the Hero Six, um, but it, I mean, it functionally, it's it's about the same as as a Hero Five in everything except where it excels is that it is able to write at a hundred megabits a second, and you get so much clearer footage when you do that and you get much crisper footage when you do that and you're able to move around and have it not blur or whatnot well, without one of the, the cool need... things with it too is that it's got actual optical image stabilization in built into it yes that's what i was going to say afterwards is like it so it i think it, i don't know if it actually does e electronic as well as the optical but if it's just optical it does an incredible job at the optical image stabilization um in, um, it's they, enough. They, um, sorry, uh, the the original Sony's like uh, when they started it, they actually included the digital uh, image stabilization as well, and it's only like the most recent GoPros that have actually started doing it years later. But um, yeah, it's cool that it's got actual optical. And what about yeah, I, the actual... it makes yeah, it makes sorry. a huge difference. Yeah. So you're saying you went away from using a gimbal. Yes, I, I, I have not used my gimbal in ever since I started the channel. I, I probably shot one or two videos using the, the gimbal GoPro setup, and then I stopped using it immediately as I got the Sony cam. I, it's, yeah, it's light years better. Hmm. Interesting. And so what about the actual uh, streaming side of it, the uh, going from camera to internet? Yeah, so, I mean, th this, is, this is brand new... For, for me to, to figure out. Um, uh, as I said, I, I just recently invested in, in all this new gear. But basically, so the, the Sony is able to, uh, I mean, I, I, like most cameras can do HDMI out. I believe GoPros still do HDMI out unless they, they've locked it yep. down. I remember hearing something about them locking it down. Um, but it does HDMI out. So I was originally about to dump a bunch of money in like the, the FPV drone hardware gear that they do, but that's all analog stuff. Um, and like, yeah, it's a little bit cheaper because you can get a, a, a streaming setup for maybe like $100, $120 or so. Um, um, uh, just sorry to interrupt, Aldos, do you mind if I play some of your gameplay from your recent live stream uh, while you're talking? 
Oh, no, de definitely go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I be... Do it. You just dropped off. <laughs> so, but, um, hang on. Let me... Uh, it's a yes. But... Yeah, okay, cool. Boom. So, um, for anyone... For the uninitiated, doing Wi-Fi live streaming, um, this is the right way to do it. It looks pretty good. It looks really good. Um, so yeah, what uh, so what? Yeah, so what, what hardware do you use to actually go from the uh, HDMI out? Oh, sorry, I'm pausing internet. it. That guy right there, he's got that uh, shell ejecting shotgun. So yeah, we, right, we, Harrison. Oh my god, it's so cool. Uh, we'll talk about that after this, but uh, yeah, continue. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so the HDMI out it goes to an HDMI transmitter. The actual. Uh, the actual hardware unit is the Nereus Pro, I believe. Uh, the the Nereus Prime Pro. That's that's what it's called. Um, it's uh, I guess like slightly on the expensive side uh, at like two hundred fifty US dollars. Um, but again, like this is what I decided to cash out with my YouTube monies and invest into it and and be able to do stuff like this. Um, so what that does, so it has to have a five volt power supply, so I just use a 10,000 hour, uh, 10,000 milliamp hour battery that I connect to my back. I, I retrofitted my Nerf vest to allow me to, to put that in. I can charge my camera at the same time because it has another um, micro USB in. So, so I'm charging my camera. The is mounted on your vest, just to... The, the transmitter I have mounted on my my head strap that the camera is mounted on, and then I have the, the battery pack for it on my vest. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that transmits. The, the transmitter itself um, is limited to 100 feet with direct line of sight. Uh, and that, that will, will drop a little bit when there's stuff in between. Um, but luckily, like, my, my arena is relatively small. It's 3,700 square feet. Corner to corner, it would be uh, maybe at maximum distance, it'll be 70 feet. And I think for most of the stream that I was, I was filming on Friday, I, ha I was, like, mostly on the team that was in the back of the arena, so the farthest away from the receiver. And um, it only dropped a few times, and that was actually just because of my internet, not because of, of the like uh, reaching the the realm or the, the distances of the receiver or anything else like that. But I also have a lot of objects that are in between, like there there are walls. There are you know uh, solid solid wooden walls that are um, in between me and the the receiver and the transmitter. Um, but so the transmitter is hooked up to my computer. I was actually I decided to downgrade. I was using my Surface. Um, Pro 4 with an i5 to do it earlier, and then I figured out some cool tricks that allowed me to drop my CPU usage um, on on my my uh, the desktop that we use as our main computer for the gym, and uh, that's like a, maybe like a five year old Mac, uh, just like a, like a uh, an iMac, and um, I, it, technically hardware speaking, it's it's got worse specs than my my Surface Pro 4, um, but it did. Wonderfully, it did fine, um, and so that that connects to like a game capture card because you have to do HDMI in. Um, so yeah, the receiver's connected to the game capture card. Game capture card converts it through a mini USB into a regular USB into your computer, and then you have software that encodes it and sends it to YouTube, and you get this clear footage. And like finally, it it, it worked. <laughs> it's yeah. been a long time coming. So. I've seen like a, a, your multiple like uploads, uh, your like your streams um, over the past three weeks. Is you troubleshooting and trying to get it working? And yeah, it was cool to see that this week. Um, yeah, it looked really nice. Um, what was I gonna say? Ah, uh, yeah. So any uh, for the viewers watching this footage, do note when he's running, it's like fairly smooth. Uh, so yeah, that optical image stabilization is pretty dope with those. Um. Uh, one other thing. Oh, one other thing I will note is the screen tearing is from my monitor, not from the gameplay, uh, because I'm doing a monitor capture to stream it to you guys. So anyway, but um, uh, yeah. Uh, one uh, one thing I will point out um, about like the whole Wi-Fi streaming thing is GoPro did make a streaming unit back piece to attach onto GoPros. However, um, they don't like 
um, uh, what is it? Uh, consumer sell it. They only commercially sell it to broadcasting pas partners, as they word it. Uh, so you actually have to contact them, and yeah, that kind of thing. Um, and that that thing is actually quite cool because it's like uh, some other um, transmitters where it's an encoder and transmitter. So what it does is it encodes the um, um, the HDMI out or the GoPro back out um, instantly into H.264 and then transmits that over the Wi-Fi um, and uh, and then that uh, what, like actual Wi-Fi signal can be the broadcast signal itself so it's kind of acting like a yeah um, it's all it's kind of an all-in-one setup but that thing is pricey as hell um, I think it was yeah uh, they didn't list the price online, basically. But, I'd be shocked if it was less than 4000 Yeah, like this thing is tiny too, and the whole thing, like the whole outer shell is basically heat sinks. <laughs> like the the um, the um aluminium uh, heat sink vent fins. So yeah, um, there were some other, I think Teradec, um, who make HDMI transmitters for basically cinema gear. We're doing smaller and smaller ones, but you know you're looking at a thousand dollars or maybe six hundred dollars for that. That um, is yeah. well out of the yeah. range of ownership. Yeah, out of <laughs> out of reasonable reasonability. But um, yeah, this is like it's cool stuff to see. So um, I do implore our viewers if you do enjoy our stuff um and you respect my opinion as a content creator. I think Aldos is doing some pretty cool stuff here and pushing the envelope and he's um yeah, improving with each upload and that kind of thing of his edits and that kind of thing. Also, note here, he's using a really nice uh aluminium uh rebarreled um uh Sentinel. <laughs> so Sentinel Union <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Can we bring this back to gameplay real quick? Yep. So uh, with with like gameplay itself and whatnot, I know when when Jangular was starting, like it's just it, there there was none. There was nothing. There was none. I remember when when I first saw Jangular's channel, and it was like, great, Jangular's doing it. Who else is doing it? Did you find Nobody. any of us or? <laughs> Just curious. Well, I, yeah, I, I, maybe I found you guys later um, or or whatnot. But I mean, this was this was a couple of years back. Yeah. Um, we, but I uh, we ooh, yeah, we don't have that many. Most of the channel is um, the loadouts and yeah, reviews. Yeah, continue. I, just, you know, just to say that that I I think Jangler was the only one that was actually pumping out regular gameplay footage. Mm. And looking at the field now. Like there's a lot. I feel like this is this is a boom that's that's about to happen. Like 2018 could be the year of Nerf War gameplay footage and actual like good Nerf War gameplay footage. You got people like Tiger Foam and Bradley Phillips and Kaba Crazy and and you know lots of other people that are really starting to like amp up the the play field and like you know push out really good quality content. Hmm. I know those guys um, have messaged me on Facebook asking me questions about what I, how I do stuff and that. Um, so regular and MTB pick one. <laughs> now this definitely. I would love for this to be the year of gameplay. Um, well, it, yeah, it's that, something that's that... one of the things that um. I, no, no, like this I'm is the year of HPA. Part... <laughs> year of HPA. <laughs> Year of uh, Blaster Tag Association. Year of gameplay. <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal right there. All th the trifecta. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, that was one of the things that I'm always trying to crack. Um. Uh. Is, um, with the gameplay is that, you know, like gameplay for games is like its whole multi-million-dollar genre. Um, and then you've got like the airsoft guys do it, and then you've got the fake gameplay scripted Ugh. nerf wars, which get millions of views. So like, um, how do you like? I think do we have to tap into the younger audience, and uh, or how do we tap? Is the 
adult nerf audience too small um, might be a thing. But also, one of the things is, like, that younger audience does grow up. So, like, doing content that caters to both keeps them f still following your channel, whereas they might leave something that's more children-targeted. Um, yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head there, is that we have to look to the future of the hobby, and that is keeping those younger players engaged and interested for the next few years. And, uh, you know, it's, a lot of people want to stick to their, you know, not necessarily shunning kids, but not being as welcoming of the kind of questions they can get and the, you know, they're kids, they're not going to be the most mature, but without those kids, our hobby will eventually uh, hit a plateau or start declining. So we need to constantly no be on the lookout. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to you know, get into a mindset where we can't let other people in or be open-minded. We need to continue to welcome new players and find ways to retain them. Uh, I will uh, also point that out, uh, out with uh, Nerf Modders Welcome, the Facebook group. I do very much remember a time uh, when there was just such hatred for the veterans or people who had been on the page since the beginning um, to effing new guys is like they were named on Nerf Haven, but basically anyone posting questions that had already happened before and then the whole let me google that for you, but also like sometimes um, yeah, uh, like try having a, a proper directory of information that you can just link someone um, and also sometimes they don't even know the terminology because we've got a lot of weird little acronyms or words made by the community like um uh, like, uh, what is it, SRCB, uh, no wait, RSCB, RSCB, there it is, um, <laughs> see, I don't use one, um, or Scar Barrel, why is it called a Scar, is it based off the gun, <laughs> like, um, or, uh, where it was, like, an acronym of the co-creators or something like that, uh, from Singapore, um, and yeah, that kind of thing, um, so yeah, I agree, um, we've had, um, we try and encourage people to turn up to, like, newbies to turn up to our HVZs first, because that's, like, the most um, accessible, and with HVZ you can get away with a stock blaster, like, as Ryan put it before, we, if you've got the lungs and the, uh, uh, the stamina, you can run around with a Maverick. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good entry point. I also would love to, to see more interaction or find the way to bring more of the players from HVZ into uh, what we would consider more standard nerf games. Because there's a huge market for HVZ players because a lot of them they play at college, they play for fun, and then it kind of dissipates, disappears. They don't, you know, take that anywhere potentially Same because they don't know Z there's Town, more. Yeah. Um, Zedtown in Melbourne, uh, they did a, a day game and a night game. The day game had 400 people, the night game had 500 people. Well, the, the Sydney one that I recently attended that you showed the pictures of earlier, that was 800 people in the day game and 600 people in the night game. That's incredible. Holy cow. Yeah. Actually, I'll... So there, there is a huge... like, And that... I don't know, because those those people definitely fall well outside the kind of level like there's casual nerf as we would call it but those are you know casual with you know in wide text and x's and underscores around it you know yeah it's just finding a way to uh inform them yeah and that there is more and you know if they had fun doing this they may have fun doing this other thing that's very related to it that they didn't have the information on Mm. It's like, um, how do you get maybe someone who does model painting um, of just anything models, but then, uh, like, oh, I don't know, airplanes or whatnot, and then how do they then get the 40k bug, or that kind of thing, um, and then actually participating in those kinds of games? Because um, there are a lot of people who just mod Nerf Blasters, but they don't turn up to events at all. Like uh, Jodacast, he does a lot of really cool stuff, and he did that that massive, um, the aliens auto turret thing, and he had two stampedes in it, and he structured the whole outside to be like a replica, like the, the gun, uh, the turret from the movie, uh, but he's, 
I think turned up once to one of our events and uh, no one knew who he was and I think no one actually went and said hi just to introduce themselves and I don't think he turned up again so Jodacast if you're watching come back (laughs) that's a huge a huge point to talk about actually really quick sorry to cut you off there Aldos but um, my first game uh, in the Bay Area after just playing around with friends we tried to have our own thing and found out there was an established game here, Burn. Uh, I showed up, and one of the organizers, as I was setting up, took the time to come over and engage with me, talk, and ask, you know, uh, check if I was having fun, what did I bring, all the, you know, just just generally be engaging and get me involved. And that was such a huge thing for me to stay interested and cut, come back and keep coming back was because I made friends. So. If you're at a game and you see someone new, talk with them. Get to know them. Odds are you probably share some interests with them if you're both out there fleeing the phone with children's toys. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just one of those things that doesn't get talked about a ton, but uh, is a massive help for player retention. It's, mm. it's amazing that being a good person is is what fosters a positive community. Radical. Who would have thought? So this this actually uh, that that's kind of like my my other field is is parkour, which is also relatively niche when you consider the grand scheme of things. But one of the things that really helped spur on the growth of the the parkour discipline was just like if you're outdoors training and somebody comes up and just asks you what you're doing, like don't just you know shove them off and be like, oh no, you're doing stuff, like go away. Um, you talk with them, like educate them, or just find out who they are. Or, you know, tell them, talk to them what you're doing, because you're an actual person, and you can have an actual human conversation with them. And sometimes it's really like people just want a community that they feel a part of. And if you just go in and we get somebody new, and we say like, "Oh, hey, welcome! Like, it's great to have you. We hope you have a fun time." It goes a long way. I'm just gonna jump in and just say I'm so happy that parkour is still a thing. I was jumping over benches and railings when I was in high school, and uh, I'm just happy it's still a thing. Oh yeah, it's I mean it's growing, it's growing like crazy, um, and uh, yeah, it's I think it's fun. It's awesome. I wish it's something I had gotten into. Even I remember actually the first HVZ game I went to at uh, San Francisco State University. There was a group of uh, people doing parkour, and they saw what we were doing, and they were like you know, what's what's going on, what's this? And so they got involved and they just rolled up as zombies. So you had zombie players just like parkouring over oh, stuff Jesus. and like yes. it was awesome. Oh no. <laughs> so I, oddly enough, like I, one one of the just to tie this back into nerf, um, I think assess- accessibility is also a really big factor of whether or not you can get and, and grow the hobby and whatnot. There's a lot of uh, organizations that are popping up all over the country that are, are do, choosing the easy to follow business model of renting out like indoor soccer fields and just saying like, hey, let's we're gonna rent it out for an hour. It's a it's a, a cheap entrance cost and like let's just shoot foam at each other for you know an hour or two and you know you don't need to want to to participate in any sort of like you know crazy uh, way or whatnot, or like expensive way. You don't have to have the best blasters. Uh, you don't have to have the most powerful blasters. Like, let's just come, get a load off, and you know, enjoy ourselves. And I mean, those are popping up all over the place. I've also been noticing a lot more the wonderful harmony between Nerf and parkour gyms. And a lot of parkour gyms that I, I look at, and I'll, I'll see the kind of events they run. A lot of them are doing Nerf recently. Um, and I mean, I, I think it. it makes for a good combination where you don't have to be a nerf business and have to only do nerf like you you make the money doing parkour classes and you know whatnot and now you have the space and if you ever have downtime let's just host a nerf war like let's have people in and you shoot foam at each other Mm. Uh, and then you clean up afterwards and now it's just back to being a parkour gym yeah which is pretty cool um I mean, sadly, we don't have those sort of things in Melbourne, but... Uh, um, yeah, there is. But, we, I mean, we haven't been able to use them. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, that's what okay. I meant. Like, we don't oh, have no, mean. people running events like that. But we've sort of taken over a paintball field at the moment, kind of 
every Melbourne Nerf Wars we've run has been at this uh, local paintball field. And that's a similar thing. You know, they've got the facilities. I did that location. Awesome. Oh, it's great. Mm. The guys there are so love... nice and so accommodating. And that's awesome. I have actually tried to get in contact with um, the paintball field in my area because they have some stuff that I'd like to use and host games at. They won't respond to my emails because they're about Nerf. At least that's my assumption, is because they're about ranking the field for Nerf use. Because uh, when I emailed them just with general questions, they got back to me. When I said, hey, I'd like to host like a Nerf event and rent out your fields, nothing. <laughs> well, I don't know what um, paintball is. Like, paintball, I assume, is very different to paintball in Australia. It's not as big, so this particular field has quite a bit of downtime. So us, you know, giving them a couple hundred bucks um, to use their field that wasn't going to get used anyway, you know, it's a huge, you know, boon for them with no effort on their part because they don't need to ref us or anything. Yes, it exactly. It's it's an hour that they're not, or, you know, a couple hours that they're not using and not making any money. You might as well rent it out. Yeah. Um uh, it sometimes it can just be if they need a staffer to mind use. Um, it, that's what puts the price through the roof. Um, when we were using Northcote indoor cricket, um, they were charging us a hundred dollars an hour, um, and that and then they wanted to also include charging us for setup and pack up time. And so we would only we would run the event for just four hours, and we'd make sure that we'd had at least twenty people turn up, pay twenty bucks each. And we, uh, because the field was so small, we had to uh, do 5v5 or 6v6. But 5v5 was better. And, yeah, it was a bit of a joke, really. Uh, yeah, and but I had to actually have everything, um, like, actually rostered and organized um, more than usual. That um, uh, So we had the quick succession of, okay, you guys are done. Now uh, red and yellow team are now on. And now red and blue or... Green and yeah, we had all color codes and that in high rotation. It kind of worked. What 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 about airsoft fields? Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, just uh, one other thing, Jangular. Um. Um. The Corridor Digital Channel. Um. They yeah. hired out a paintball field to do their little Nerf thing. Um. A while ago, but that's like in LA, and I know you're in a different area. But I think I think it totally depends on the field. I guess. Depends on the field, and also, I'm sure Corridor Digital was able to say, hey, we're, fucking we're Corridor, Corridor Digital, Digital. <laughs> yeah, we have right. this large of an audience, we'd like that's to use it. your field and rent it out. <laughs> yeah. Then again, they, they yeah. hire out the whole field for airsoft things, too, Oh yeah. so, yeah. Oh, well. yeah. The closest airsoft field here that is sizable enough to use is an hour and a half away, and considering there's like six different games within an hour or so of me uh, it, the, the reasoning to go out that far to host a game doesn't seem to make the most sense hmm. mm. um, alright this has kind of uh, flowed on I guess into like we've already kind of covered the casual uh, and the competitive stuff so Nerf philosophy prompt uh, so, um, a game has two teams and uh, has a win and fail state for both teams. Therefore, the game is inherently competitive. So, what is the difference between casual and competitive nerf? The mindset of the players. Um, Jangular uh, or Aldos? That can be part of it. Uh, part of it is also organization. Um, I considered burn games to have a competitive feel to them because the players are all trying to win and whenever I go to a game I'm usually trying to win even if I'm messing around but um, there was no reward, no longevity to any of it. It was just a single game. Um, a competitive setting to me is something that has organized teams, rules, consistency, and a flow that continues on past one event. Or if it's a tournament, you know, it's, it yeah, it flows through that entire tournament. It's not just, all right, we're playing, let's pick teams, and uh, this is the game we're playing, and we'll play two rounds, and we'll pick teams again. That can have a competitive feel to it if all the players are, you know, playing hard and, and playing win and all that, but 
it doesn't um, it's not a competitive game. It's unfortunate because the word can be used both to describe a style and as its own format, so to speak. I think also that the the motivation factor for obtaining the win contingency will change whether or not it's considered casual or competitive. I think just because it has a win fail state doesn't make it competitive. Like obviously it's a game, obviously it's competitive. Yeah. If you're playing pickup basketball, you, I mean, you want to win because it's basketball, but you know, you're not like doing everything possible in order to have that win contingency because there's nothing on the line. You know, there's nothing that that's changing it. I think the second that you put a a group of core people together against another group of core people and you give them something that they're willing to fight for and that produces something that's like that's special uh that that's that's something that people not only enjoy playing in but also enjoy watching um i think that but the analogy that came to my head uh as jangler was talking was uh american football and the pro bowl and how the pro bowl is always before the super bowl but it's like the the pro bowl is terrible it's unwatchable because the win contingency like even though they they have the winner and the loser they're not playing for anything it's so they they just right. kind of like people kind of just like push each other a little bit or like you know sometimes tackle but if they don't do that they're still going to go off and go back to their teams and you know be regular people because nobody cares uh, but you change that and go towards a, a playoff game and like things are different because it matters and people are going to do stuff that makes you go wow that was incredible that was a great play it was great athleticism or whatnot like you know that's what what makes something i think that extra level of, of competitive i think um edscar and chat pretty much nailed it on the head um you know when you go home do you remember who won you that's know? exactly that's definitely how i feel after games where it's not a competitive setting it's like yeah we're playing we want to win and everything but the primary objective of most games is to have fun not necessarily to mm. win yeah, yeah, yeah. bragging rights aren't on the line and that's on Aldos's point of you know giving the team something to compete for it can be as simple as bragging rights and standings this team oh definitely beat this team people love rivalries i love rivals that is what drives so long as it doesn't sports. boil over mm. of course correct yeah, yeah it still has to be respectful yeah yeah, um, but like yeah. you know, for for example, Z Town, by a lot of definitions, in fact, you'd probably instinctively call it casual because of the attendees. But you know, you care who wins. I I I remember every one of my deaths. I remember every win and loss there. So I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing. Oh, that yeah, that was about. the thing. Like um. This this kind of came up from a uh, a post from uh, what's his name DV Dennis. Um, uh, he posted on Nerf Modders Welcome. It was basically uh, what's luck, what's boy. the best uh, <laughs> FPS for competitive Nerf, and uh, because he said what's the best, everyone got angry. But um, uh, the 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 question uh, the 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 question of like um with, like the the responses I was seeing was um it was kind of muddied what like the definition of casual versus competitive because um uh, like if i'm thinking the actual ultimate just casual um where it would be a game with no rules or no fail state and that would be like um a jared's giant nerf war um the one where he hires out the stadiums and all the kids just go in there and shoot each other um and it doesn't matter um, whereas it's the moment that you start having kind of rules and structure, I think, yeah, like there is kind of that, with the sides and that kind of thing. Um, and th uh, that, I guess that also ties in a little bit to what we were saying before with, um, you know, getting in the young people, um, we found if like the people, the players are too young, then they aren't actually following the rules of HVZ, like, uh, just the basic rules of taking your hits, um... 
or you know not throwing your blaster at people when you lose <laughs> or you know yeah. but um um yeah and um so uh, and i guess on the the other end of the spectrum i do remember once people bringing up um i don't think it was our group it might have been s some other group but um oh no it was our group uh, essentially uh, someone suggested should there be a a, a prize pot um uh, like a, a a cash prize pot of everyone puts in x amount of money and then the winner takes all kind of thing yeah, um, sorry, sorry, Pete. That was a, a really bad idea. Was it Pete? Yeah. Did he suggest I think that? So. No, I'm, I'm thinking like... this is years ago before you uh, got to Melbourne. Okay. Um, any? Uh, I think it was actually Cam. Uh, you know the Cam, Brian. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. yeah um, anyway, um, but yeah, one of the things that we all brought up is that then it's no longer just a game it's now a professional or semi-professional sport and now people aren't going to just be like well not just like oh yeah i just got tagged or, or whatever or oh he didn't take his tag i'm not going to punch his lights out over it people are going to get a lot more angry over the game not being absolutely fair the refs not being absolutely on point and that kind of thing and i think that's the that line of uh, when is it still fun and when has it become a part-time job kind of thing as a, like a semi-pro kind of like but the difference between just playing Overwatch playing competitive Overwatch which is just you know you're not actually winning for money and then actually being part of an Overwatch team um, completely jumping back uh, I've just threw a photo of the Delta Trooper into chat so if you wanted to put that up on screen it's a thing Oh, the blaster. Yeah. See if I can um just transfer that. Uh yeah. So, were there any other thoughts on on that or like what like um, I actually I guess this leads into um to our final point I believe um, so Jangula, what is Blaster Tag Association, and how are you going to uh, mitigate? Uh, competition, that kind of thing. So, Regular. as long as I've been nerfing, uh, shortly the first year I started nerfing, I realized I wanted structured competition for nerf. And so we started trying to test rule sets, game types, and stuff like that. Um, and I finally got to a point where we have something we're happy with. But in that time, uh, competitive nerf this last year has seen a big boost, which makes me really happy. And there's different game types popping up all over the place. So I got in contact with uh, Quick Flag, uh, Creator Min 2, uh, FTT Speedball, which is an all-stock game type uh, that Foam Dark Thunder is running, and uh, Squad Supremacy in Australia, in the Brisbane area, um, from Liam is doing that. And talking to them about kind of all coming together under one banner, so to speak. And that's what Blast Tag Association is. We, we want to grow the competitive side of nerfing worldwide and make it as accessible for people as we can so we have different game types that people can um, organize and run and the website just went up and that will allow people to once they get in contact with you then I get them an account to host events they can track and record results from tournaments and events and everything and manage teams and teams can follow their progression on a on the standings and things like that so it really just kind of tries to bring people together to further the competitive side of nerf and bring it more into a sports realm um and just um, you can see so the, i'm uh, i'm loving the sound of this can we get some sort of elo based you know team standing that would be fucking amazing that elo? is something along those lines would be great the issue we ran into with that, at least right now, the first version of the site we're running is like a beta site. It's WordPress with plugins that do organization for tournaments and sports and stuff. Uh, we almost went all in and had a custom made site done with all the crazy stuff we want, but realized 
before we do that, we should test something out and find all the features we really wish we had and the ones we may not need and things like that. Um, so yeah, ranking in terms of ELO and things like that, if you get down to the player, you're going to need way more referees and other people to track certain things. Like we've talked about tracking player hits and uh, KDRs and things like that, but that would require an extra referee at each spawn point to take things down that say, you know, okay, who tagged you? Uh, we mark that down and then more data input on the website as well. So it's not impossible, it just requires more work. You know, it'd be real cool if we could find someone who knows how to make uh, Android apps and iPhone apps to enable that. Yes. Imagine if you got tagged, you uh, tapped on your phone when you go to respawn and it recorded a uh, like a kill feed of the game. That would be pretty hmm. fucking cool. That'd be pretty cool. There's so also, much that we... Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, just for, for those people in the chat who might not know what ELO is, uh, not me, but... For people I didn't in the chat. Know. Oh, sorry. It's it's a way of ranking uh, teams, basically. Uh, Elo was developed for chess by a dude called Elo, and uh, basically you have a certain number of points. And if you defeat someone who is far far lower points than you, the amount that they lose and the amount that you gain is very minimal. But if you defeat someone who is you know far higher ranking than you, then you gain more points and they lose more points. It's probably the go-to standard uh, point-based ranking system for games like chess, Go, uh, that that type of thing. Mm, oh, okay. I never heard it's, of this. Oh, okay, yeah, so it's, it's much I, more effective. I would assume a lot of video yeah, games yeah. use this. It is indeed widely used in a lot yes. of games or, or, or to varying or degrees of success. Yeah, uh, they're mostly for video games that are um, multiplayer and stuff like that. They're usually modified a, a different algorithm because it will account for um, individual performance within the team. But oh, um, right. it's good for systems where you know our team can never play every other team, but we want to get a relative comparison of skill. Ah, oh, right, right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, that, I that love would, the idea. Cool idea. I, I, I think this is something that just you 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 start it and just kind of like play the field and see where the community is able to take it and and like add in suggestions and thoughts and ideas on how to you know foster it and yeah. make it grow. I definitely have a lot of interest in in people adding different game types and. Um, I think it's great that people want to develop game types. Um, I just want to make sure that the things we add and promote have been tested and and refined and gotten to a point where it's, yes, this is good not only for the group that's running it, but um, it's something that's entertaining for viewers, something that is accessible in terms of entry-level players being able to play and promote and things like that. Also are groups able to uh, have enough space to host these games? Because space is an issue in a lot of places. So we tried to find, at least for King of the Hill and some other stuff, we tried to find that sweet spot in terms of size and FPS limits. And there's just a lot that goes into it. And I love, I love uh, the excitement that a lot of people have. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what other people develop to add to it. And as we go, I expect to see some game types become more popular than others, and those may become the go-to game types across the nation or across the world even, and that's exciting to me. Even if it's not the game type that I've personally developed over the last three plus years, we're still playing competitive nerf, and that's the dream right there. Mm. Well, um, I mean, this is literally the first I've heard of this, so hit me up because I want more details because that would be a really cool thing to implement in our games. Yeah. Definitely. If you guys want to uh, test out some of the game types and start some, I'd love to have that happen. For yeah. sure. And that goes for anyone out there. I want I want this to be accessible for people. Um, the website's up. Um, Facebook is up. It's all, it's all there. 
Yeah. Uh, um, so to clarify, what what is the Facebook and what is the website? Uh, BlasterTagAssociation.com. Yeah, uh, and that'll be in the, that. listed in the description. There you go, and then yeah, you can search Blaster Tag Association on Facebook as well. Um, I don't think I can link in the chat, so otherwise I would link it because I tried to link Aldos's channel earlier. Oh no. Uh, um, is, are you only uh, are you only allowing game types that are serviceable universally, as in like? Flat field, uh, or or does terrain come into play? That's one of the the sticking points that uh, it's going to have to be figured out. Um, because I like the idea of being able to just go to a field. You have your cover. You can set up, and that works. So it's it's module. It's easy to replicate. It would require investment, but. Not everyone may not have access to a flat field, so it's 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 a sticking point we're going to have to figure out. I I don't expect everything to go perfectly smooth over this first initial period of time, but um, I'm, I'm dedicated to work through it and and get things situated in the best way possible because I want people to be able to go from one game to the other. And not have major game or uh, gameplay changes where they don't understand why something is a different way. Um, you know, you don't play baseball in one state and go to a different state, and the rules are different. It's kind of yeah. trying to keep that consistency while still having, hopefully, enough flexibility as we fine tune things. So, if there was ever like an end war uh, equivalent kind of meetup uh, for just like competitive nerf. Um people aren't going to be like, ah, everything's all different. Exactly, which is one of the goals. Weekend long camp out of just competitive nerf and large scale games. Oh yeah. I'd go. I, I'm tired of the HVZ meetups. I want I want some <laughs> large scale PvP stuff. Some meat. I'm, I'm with you, Aldous. Like I, I've tournament. already started looking at venues for, like, national tournaments and things we, like, like that in the future. We're not there yet, but I need to... Hire out one of those fucking abandoned factories that airsoft people use, and then <laughs> just sign me the fuck up. Hell yeah. You got some of those in Rochester. <laughs> That's so far away. Yeah. No, we're, I've actually looked at venues that have um, raised seating. So like a second story where you oh. look over and you can see what would be with the field. Yeah, so there's a lot of cool stuff we can do. That's cool. Um, oh, very last thing we're going to very quickly touch on. the. Uh, here's the picture of the Delta Trooper of, um, from Nerfers 111's camera. <laughs> or, no, no. <laughs> no, there's someone's smartphone. Uh, yeah, essentially it looks like a, a more curved and streamlined... Um, uh, yeah, Recon Retaliator, and it the barrel, the faux barrel looks like it's integrated. It doesn't look like it f comes off. Um, and also the uh, orange on the top appears to be maybe translucent orange. So orange windows that might be cool. Kind of, um, kind of like. I, I would doubt that the barrel doesn't come off. Um, yeah, it's I, just a I low doubt. quality image. I can't see the seam line of that. It looks yeah continuous um but yeah that would be annoying though um yeah, yeah other if than it, that if it's not um, coming off uh, you just make it come off yeah and uh second and last image uh the star wars rival blaster i i don't know what that is um it it's like the in the shape of a the normal stoom <laughs> trooper blaster but it where did the does it feed in through the hand grip? Is it basically? It looks like it. I think so, with a pump grip built in. Oh my god! You know, actually fixing the Apollo. Yep. But yep. now it's going to be charged through the nose. Ah oh, man. Weird. And yeah, that Delta Trooper outside of the the top prime on it. Um, I like the way it looks, and I'm sure we will get pump grip. Uh, kits for the Delta Trooper because it looks from the, the the low quality images we've seen so far, it looks cool. Yeah. Or um or at least some uh, replacement parts from uh, Big Zen Z with uh, his clear 
replacement bits. Oh, so, so nice. Mm. His work's so good. All right. Um, let me... So, I believe that kind of wraps it up. Um, thank you very much, Aldos. Thank you very much, Jangular. And also thank you, Ryan, for waking up. <laughs> um, um, you sounded like I was asleep. Oh, well, I don't know. I thought you might have been sleeping in. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, thank you guys for um, coming here, chatting. Thank you to our audience. How many concurrent viewers do we still have? Um, I don't know. It's in the 60s. I three sixty-three. Let me have a look. Um, so we, yeah, the, the viewer, um, sorry, chat, our viewers. Oh, hey, Biggs is in the chat. Yes. Oh, actually, so before we wrap up, um, questions. Uh, we oh. always have questions at the end of the mod stream thing. So oh. everyone, if you have questions for the four of us, um, shoot them into chat now, and uh, we'll, we'll give a few minutes to answering them, because that's always nice. Okay. We'll wait a, a few seconds for chat to catch up. No, normally we also do the the mod shout out, but I don't know if we've. We're not doing the mod shout out because we uh, didn't okay. have time. Oh, like I, I t didn't tell the guys to get pick a mod yet, and also well, we. Didn't I want to shout out um, that Lionheart guy with his um, uh, repaint of the um, what's the name of that thing you were trying to mod? Turbo with, Advance. Yeah, his Turbo Advance. He painted it yeah. like Doom. Holy crap! I it will looks share good. that. That's good. Right. I I said the moment I saw it, this needs a doom paint, and he I did told it you fucking that. justice, <laughs> mate. Mate. Um. Hang on. Um. Hang on. Let me see if I Justin can find didn't it. tell me that. Yeah, I did. He's got it on Reddit too. Uh, yeah. Are there any questions that have popped up, Ryan, that you think are good? I'm, I'm, I'm having a look. Uh, where is my Springer design? Uh, my Springer design is not quite done yet, um, but I will definitely be endeavouring to do more work on it. Damn it, I can't find it. I think he's been pushed back on the Reddit page. Dude, what are you talking about? It's like 34. It's right there. Oh, my eyes aren't working. Uh, seen felony god complex? Yes. Uh, I know that a lot of people obsess about amp ratings on switches, but I have never had a switch burnout, um, and I use cheap, shitty knockoff 10 amp switches, so whatever. How's the Fable HPA more. Drain Blaster going? That took me literally about 20 minutes to finish, and um, it is working, I just haven't built the actual blaster around it. I'd uh, rather oh. fight the adult-sized baby. Okay, a serious question. Um, uh, what, would you rather fight 100 baby-sized adults or 100 adults, uh, one adult-sized baby? That's that's the most serious question you've got so far. I, uh, what happened to the LSK? Uh, it blew up. Yeah, he popped the air tank. Yeah, it literally exploded in my hands, and I haven't got the well, XBZ to it, fix it. It popped in your hands. With inside the shell, it didn't explode, and you weren't covered in plastic shrapnel, just to specify. Fine. I was being dramatic. Okay. Uh, were there any questions for Aldos and Jangular? Looks like there was one about uh, indoor venues. So what, do, what sort of indoor venues do you see working for BTA games? Um, it's tough. It depends on what game type you're running. Indoors, three of the current BTA game types, actually two of them, require larger fields than are generally available uh, for rent for a reasonable price, but FTT Speedball and Quick Flag uh, both can be played on uh, relatively smaller size fields. Um, as I think... Speedball uses like a basketball court in the videos I've seen, and Quick Flag is about a 90 foot field, I think. Let me check here. Uh, Ryan, have you ever. Oh, shut up, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, 60, 60 feet long for Quick Flag, 
and about 30 feet wide. So you could probably use a basketball field for that, long, like a community center strike. you Cryptic. could rent out. Sorry. Oh, here, actually, that's that's a good question. What is your ideal number of players at a Nerf War between two and one thousand? How big is location? Well, that that's uh, it's not part of the question. But that, yeah, but that it, it directly affects my answer. Well, answer instinctively. T ten v ten, I like. It's um uh, like as an organizer, it's not too unmanageable. Oh, it's a little bit small, but uh, actually, uh, it is quite the spectacle to see like a fifteen v fifteen. We've had that a couple times at um, Melbourne Nerf Wars, and it's just chaos. We take up the entire sniper's den field, and um, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. There's definitely a point where, you know, we start doing like fifty versus fifty, where it's just. Um, that footage of the, the game with all the kids that you put up was crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like doing things like flanking or um, anything other than just like spraying into the abyss. It, it it greatly diminishes what you can do in terms of gameplay options, and it just becomes uh, people just shooting across a line of each other. Aldos, when are but we seeing have... uh, 50 v 50 uh, gameplay inside Rochester Parkour? Yeah, that would be a we, I, I don't even think we could hold... It's, it barely holds 20 people, I... 10 to 10, and that gets chaotic. I think, <laughs> I think I've got a solution. Your ceilings are really high, so you just need to make uh, more elevation, like 3D parkour like uh, fields that go up and up. Have some I, I feel like our, our insurance agent would be a little upset at that. <laughs> just double decker. Just um, have everyone have um, wrist mounted blasters so you can still perform the parkour while. Uh... Look, just turn off the gravity and it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so like uh, Ender's game type stuff? Like yeah. Start yeah, do it. Or uh, the, the disc battle in Tron Legacy. <laughs> I personally awesome. think six versus six is where it's at. Mm. Actually, I will say, uh, despite the small quarters, some of the the best games that I can remember playing are around that six v six number. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. You know, I've got memories of uh, at at uh, the indoor. A Northcote indoor cricket, which is basically three uh, tennis courts uh, side by side by side, um, is the the full size of the field. So when we were doing five v five on there, if the teams were evenly matched, um, and you know I'd set up the inflatable paintball bunkers correctly, it was just like something awesome to watch because they had a, a, a stairs and deck uh, overview deck there. And oh so, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, getting to watch. Um, Actually, it was really funny. Um, there were kind of two main cliques at the time, um, and they had a little bit of a rivalry too. And so they would always form two separate teams or two squads, and so that was fun to watch them duke it out. Um, yeah. Uh, last question. We will take one more. One, one more question. Chat, be quick. Uh, you've got, like... Well, I mean, we got to kill time because there's, you know, that, like, lag and, and shit like that. And then people think up the questions, and I'm just killing Do we want to take... Ah, oh, sweet Pete. <laughs> it's Pete. <laughs> um, no, uh, Pete, Peter Braun, uh, what's the best blaster you can effectively uh, use two of at one time? Well, it, you could manta ray technically any blaster and use both of them at the same time. What do you think of Jangular Dual nemeses. Jangular, did you ban HPA? I did. Why? What? Public perception. Oh. Yeah, not because it's overpowered, not because Half of your it citizens performs carry too guns? Well. <laughs> <laughs> and how <laughs> many shootings do we have in our country? A lot. Exactly. I don't want any. So why are you worried about people worried about a paintball bottle? Absurd. <laughs> Because we already had yesterday, yesterday's game, someone come over and be like, like, oh, we thought you were, 
you know, playing paintball, or maybe, or, and then we saw it was Nerf blasters, and so if people see, you know, the the uh, canisters and the hoses, they have preconceived notions, and all it takes is one uh, upset or concerned parent or something, disgruntled person, to call the cops, have those come the cops come out and CHPA and start questioning things. Yeah, what is but this like HPA then you just say, "Hey, no, it's cool," and then then they go away. We I've, I've literally done that. You that's. That's nice in Australia. I guess. I guess they come out shooting that. But it's it's yeah, real thing. Our SWAT, our SERP no... equivalent, like walked up and said hi first <laughs> with their hands. Oh, no. Like, yeah. no, no, they didn't say hello. They said, "All right." Yeah, ID, this please. this needs to be something that is available and accessible for all people. I can take into consideration groups that are running this in different areas and may not. Um, the right way to, to put it, but all climates, all you know, types of situations people may be in. So I know it's a bummer. I personally want an HPA blaster, and I want to have one because I think they're so cool. But I don't think that they are currently right now. If we had uh, indoor have, have, venues, have you considered? And, uh, have you considered calling your local police department? Uh, when you run our events, or your events, because that's what we do. I call up the local police department and say, hey, uh, we're, we're going to be running a Nerf game, there may be people in camo carrying toys around. If you get a call, that's what it might be. Yeah, it's definitely something to consider. Um, there's also the fact they may say, don't do that. Do you get permits for, for your park battles? Uh, we no. don't have to just yet, yeah. so long under as we're gathering under 50. Yeah. Jang? I do not. Hmm. So that that might be that might be the, the next legit like Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. like letting letting people know ahead of time, uh like, hey, this is this is what's going to happen. First of all, can this happen? And you know, it's our the cops gonna be mad at that or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I've actually tried to contact our Parks and Rec department. They never got back to me. Hmm. Uh, um. Just touching back on the whole HPA thing, I think what's more OP for, uh, I guess, more casual games or for HVZ is uh, using the worker Stephens, the Gen Two Stephens. One of our oh, yeah. guys, Sammy, um, he's a <laughs> regulator, and we trust him. He's pretty. He's a sensible. Dude, well, you know, you know, he's not an asshole, um, and he, um, yeah, he was using his HPA Exus with Worker Stephens at our last HVZ game, and he had it tuned down to only be shooting one right on 130 FPS. That's our cap, and, and that was is, fucking annoying and because so every accurate. single shot he fired connected, and he was just stun locking <laughs> zombies in place. The only reason. Uh, the first time he ran it, that it actually, you know, was able to be defeated is because his bottle ran out of air, because he didn't fill it up all the way. <laughs> I love how much you can tune those. Yeah. Well, look, I think this is a great time to call it. Um, thanks to all of the people in the chat watching. Thanks to Aldos and Jangle so for joining viewers. us on the stream. Thanks, and guys. um 55, yes. yes. And thank you guys for pushing um, Aldos over the 1,000 subscriber point. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh my god. That's like, you guys are great. Yeah, because, <laughs> because tomorrow's a cutoff. Yes, it's excellent. All right. Um, uh, we will end on uh, this beautiful picture of, um, of this painted up uh, Turbo Advance to look like a Doom Gun. And he's even added in. Uh, different color tones. He's made wooden hand grip, like the wood tone hand grip, and he's even added the uh, the Doomsayer uh, seal insignia on the back of it in the the blood red. Um, yeah, that's that's sick. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. This has been the return of the Modcast episode Expect another one, one in twenty nineteen. Pardon? <laughs> now we'll, we'll probably make this. I don't know, uh, maybe at least monthly. I would like don't, to do this at don't, least. Don't promise these things. I, hey! Hey! I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta commit to something. <laughs> um, alright. Thanks, guys. Gotta make the money.
Alright, bye guys. I'll I'll hang around and chat for a bit if people have questions, and then I'll jump over onto the Arnerf uh, Discord channel. Yeah, um, join us in the Arnerf Discord channel. Um... Oh, and subscribe to Jangular too. Like, oh yeah, sorry. Kind of miss that bit. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, and yeah, ask. Subscribe to MTV. That'd be cool. Yeah. That's the thing you should do. It's true. Yeah. Subscribe. Um, there's the uh, yeah oh yeah we've got to spruik the Patreon. Um, join the Patreon. Uh, money is nice. Well, for Justin, money is nice. Yeah. And uh, all of that stuff. You know. Yes. You know. The deal. Whatever. Yeah. If you enjoy the uh, the loadout series, if you enjoy our gameplay, and uh, if you yeah enjoy the modcast, you can see that even <laughs> buy motors, like and subscribe. I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, even a dollar on the Patreon does help, and, um, and, uh, yes. Thank you very much, guys. Turtles! And...